based on what I said about the Fed, I think this will will give a better explanation. I think I'll just read through the the whole tweet. It's a long, it's a bit of a long tweet, but I think it'll it's better if I read through it and try not to summarize based on my understanding. Of it. But essentially it says people are asking why lower inflation means the Fed needs to cut rates. Okay, then we know that is pretty straightforward. Then he says, mm-hmm. since the economy is strong, GDP is growing and unemployment is low. So all these things are things that are supporting what? Interest rate hikes rather than interest rate cuts. Uh, can't Then he says, can't the Fed just keep rates high to give them more firepower to ease in case of a recession? So once things start, start going south, then they can start cutting rates because they've held rates for longer and the economy is still allowing for that. Essentially, that is what he means there. Then he says there's, there are a few angles to this. So one argument is that falling inflation increases real rates, which represent the true cost of borrowing. So and then it gives off this diagram here where real rates, it's actually nominal rates, rates that are quoted on bonds and loans minus inflation, rate at which purchasing power diminishes. So essentially what he says here, the dynamics leads to tighter financial conditions as inflation falls. So the real rates, are actually remaining higher. Why? Because nominal rates are high, but inflation is what? It's going down. I don't know if you're understanding the, this first part that he's, he's trying to explain. Carry on, my king. <laughs> okay. So what it means is that this could be one of the reasons why the Fed is signaling that they are now considering cutting interest rates Rather, they, even though the economy is not screaming for interest rate cuts, but because real rates are now remaining higher, the more inflation keeps going lower. So that is the first, the first thing that he explains. So what he, what he then says is that the Fed would need to cut nominal rates in line with falling inflation. So if inflation falls, nominal rates also need to go lower. Excuse me. Uh, to keep real rates at the same level. Therefore, Fed might have overdone this as nominal rates fell much faster than inflation recently, right? So by nominal rates, he's not Mm -hmm. not talking about the actual interest rate hikes that that, that every single when we're having a, a central bank meeting or a Fed meeting where they say they're hiking interest rates, he's not talking about that. He's talking about about AMA yields. Whenever they say maybe AMA 10-year yields or AMA 5-year yields, that is what he means by nominal oh. rates. Because, because we've seen oh. what, we, what we saw specifically this week, we saw interest, sorry, we saw bonds go. Remember, AMA, AMA bonds, NAMA, NAMA, NAMA yields, they go in opposite direction. We saw bonds oh. go up this week because they were pricing in a Fed cut, which means that the actual nominal rates started falling. Um, Our 10-year yields, five-year yields, all those yields uh, started falling. That are quoted against bonds and loans. So all of those started falling. So that is what he means when he says when he says that the Fed might have overdone this a bit as nominal as nominal rates fell much faster than inflation recently. Because I think I think the 10-year yield, I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I think it fell below four 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 percent in a very long time. I think it has been hovering around or five percent all this time. But it 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 fell it fell sharply the past week after the Fed uh, announced that they're looking at cutting rates. They didn't say they will, but they said they are considering or they now having talks on that topic. So we saw a a huge a huge fall in nominal rates. So that is what he means there when he says that it might have been overdone because inflation is sitting at 4%. I'm talking about co-inflation, but we've had a nominal rate deep even below or 4%. So it might okay. have done that. That is what he means. So essentially, this is the first reason why, or what, one of the first reasons, or this might be some one of the reasons why the Fed spoke about cutting interest rates, even though the economy is supporting AMA interest rates to stay higher for longer because inflation is falling. It means now real rates are high. But if we see nominal rates fall as well in line with inflation, then essentially AMA real rates should remain at the same level because both inflation and nominal are going down. Yeah, well, so oh. that is the first reason. And then secondly, secondly, he went into fiscal. So fiscal, it's essentially tax. The fiscal, is where you're looking at government. Remember, monitor Mm-hmm. Yes, bank interest rates. Fiscal, you're looking at government and tax. 
So that is where you control mm. you control government spending and also whether you increase or decrease the tax. But essentially here, uh, he says keeping rates at high at, at, at the highest level over the past decade leads to higher debt interest payments over time. That makes sense. Therefore, the US mm -hmm. has about a trillion, a trillion of debt maturing in 2024, which needs to be refinanced at higher rates. This will be a substantial drag on the fiscal budget, so on the governmental budget, as debt interest payments will rise substantially. Remember, what does it mean? Remember, Ngatin, when we when we spoke, when we were talking about bonds, I said governments also issue what? Bonds. So what he's saying yeah. here is that about a trillion of debt is maturing in 2024, which needs to be refinanced at higher rates. This will be a substantial drag on the fiscal budget as debt interest payments will rise substantially. So if, if rates remain higher for longer, then of course, our repayments will be higher. And then that will mean that from a, from a government budget or a fiscal budget, then they need to cough up more or they need to have a bigger budget to be able to accommodate what these higher uh, interest rates are uh, debt repayments, right? So then he goes on to say they are already approaching 1 trillion which makes about 15% of total government spending in 2023. So with US debt levels at 33 trillion and continuously rising, rates have to decline to make debt service payments manageable. That is essentially why he, why he, he included the fiscal, the, fiscal, the fiscal side of things. So that could be a second reason, which okay, besides real rates, the second reason could be that the Fed is now also looking at the government side of things, the fiscal side of things, to also accommodate that. Because the economy mm. is not screaming for rate cuts. But Bona, they've okay. now started talking about rate cuts. So I felt this this explains it better than me just So mm. then then thirdly, it's the risk of recession. Higher rates increase the chances of a recession. We know that. As the higher cost of borrowing restricts household spending and investments by corporations. We know that. That's the whole aim of hiking interest rates. Then the impact of higher rates is not only a function of absolute levels, but also of time. What does it mean? The longer rates remain high, the larger the fraction of debt that gets rolled over to higher payments. Makes sense. Because value interest rates are going higher, so more debt will be repaid at a higher interest. And then increasing this therefore increases the cost of living for consumers and corporate costs for businesses. Barely, that's what we know, because that is what that is what we explained as an understanding. What if they're hiking interest rates, they're trying to cool the economy or slow down the economy. Obviously, that means higher debt repayments. So businesses will struggle, consumers will struggle, and then that will lead to what? Increase in unemployment and all of those things that, that could lead to a recession. So for now, it looks like the Fed managed to achieve a soft landing and they wouldn't jeopardize it by keeping rates unnecessarily high for too long. So this goes back to, to what I spoke about, which I also feel which that is what, because that is, that is one of the themes that has been happening in the past few months or weeks, which they've been talking about, can the Fed actually achieve a soft landing? Can they actually bring inflation down while the economy is still strong, while unemployment is still low, right? So all of those things have been on the on the talks when it comes to uh, the financial markets. So maybe the Fed is like, okay, let us actually start considering while we still, while while our economy is still strong, and maybe we can achieve a soft landing. Because if we if we continue to to perpetrate. The, 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 the position of being hawkish and saying we'll keep rates higher for longer, that will, that will result in market participants buying more of the dollar and that will keep our, uh, our currency higher. And then we'll, we'll also be at some point forced to do what? To continue sticking to the, to the narrative of higher interest rates. And that could be bad for us or that could hurt us when things actually turn south, when the economy actually turns south. So they like, okay, while we are still in a good position, let us watch. Let us let us try and shift our position, our stance, right mm -hmm. now, so that when the market screams and says 
cut interest rates, we've already introduced e markets or the market participants to our position, and it will be easier for us to just cut interest rates and not drive the economy into a recession because we've kept rates higher for too long. Therefore, also interest rate expectations stay higher for longer, which means that market participants and investors keep on buying the dollar. So let us do the opposite of that. So that it, in, a, in, a, in essence, this also touches on what I was trying to explain with you. Just based on the risk of recession, they also see that they have an opportunity of not having a deep recession, of having a mild recession. So they don't want to jeopardize that by keeping rates higher for longer, or even talking about we are not considering cutting interest rates at this point. Yeah, well, so that is one of the, the third uh, reason that he also mentioned there. And then lastly, he mentioned the politics, one that we haven't gotten, gotten into yet in depth, but 2024 is an election year in the U.S. Central banks would rather keep rates lower and let the economy grow above trend rather than make the opposite mistake, especially going into an election year or during an election year. Excuse me. So it's in the interest of the current administration to deliver positive economic results for potential voters, right? So this, this is more ambiguous. It doesn't mean which, that this is how they operate, but it's, it's also just giving an outline which looking ahead, going into next year, maybe this is also one of the reasons. Because like he also said when he started off the, the whole tweet, which he, GDP, economy is strong, GDP is growing, unemployment is low. All of these things actually support what interest rates to be kept higher for longer rather than for you to start talking about my interest rate cuts. So does this make sense? Does this explain things better yeah. than how I had explained it, them? Yeah, it, it does, my king. But uh, 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 now I uh, my question now to you would be now, based on what you just said now, because mm -hmm. the data is, is showing that, is is what market pricing in or is the market wrong to price in the rate cuts for 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 next year i don't know if if i'm asking my question in a in a proper way i don't want to use the word wrong no you know it's not I you, no i get your question and it's clear and straightforward so yeah. the market is not wrong there is what there is what the fed wants because they know that the Fed wants that, is that why now they start selling the dollar? Yeah. Rem remember another thing. Remember another. Okay, let me try and answer it. Yeah. This remember another thing. They've been looking to sell the dollar since last year, September 2022. That is the first time they started talking about Fed pivot after Fed had only started mm. hiking interest rates in March. When they started saying the Fed is going to pivot before the end of 2022, we started getting closer to 2020, the end of 2022. They started saying, what? First quarter 2024. First, sorry, first quarter yeah, 2020. Yeah. And they just kept on putting the timeline further and further into the future. So now what is the Fed is, what the Fed is doing is like, okay, I'm giving you guys what you want. You've been wanting to, to like I'm giving a dog a bone, essentially. The dog has been wanting this mm. bone. Now I'm giving it to you. But I'm not just giving it to you for your sake. Right. I'm not just giving it to you for your sake. I'm giving it to you because based on all these four points that we've explained, this is what we are also looking at. Because it doesn't oh. make, it doesn't make, uh, how can I put it? Okay. Uh, from an economic standpoint or textbook standpoint, if it doesn't make sense to talk about interest rate cuts when your economy is, is overheating and growing and growing and unemployment is, is low. Because all of those things do what? Contribute to inflation, a rise in inflation. So we wouldn't oh. generally talk about cutting rates in that environment if we're looking at a textbook oh. sort of explanation oh. of, of monetary policy. So, but the Fed is doing the opposite of that. So I mean, my explanation was, before I saw this one, similar to this, but my explanation was, okay, the Fed is trying to achieve in a, a soft landing, right? So the market is not wrong for pricing in our Fed cuts next year. They, would, they could potentially come, they could not potentially come. But the market is not wrong. But what the market is now doing is easing the pressure of the Fed. 
Because remember, it's not only effect that drives e, e, e dollar or that drives the market. Also, market participants and market participant expectations based on on our interest rates. And remember, uh, if Mta, okay, I, I don't think I mentioned it in the group, but uh, it's I think it was last week we had e, 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 e University of Michigan consumer sentiment, and it actually shot up. I think from it close it went up close to sixty nine sixty nine points. I think it was around 62 points and it was expected to actually drop, but it actually went higher. But Kuleo survey, there, there was also uh, inflation expectations, one year inflation expectations and five year inflation expectations. And those inflation expectations actually dropped. Right. They've oh, always okay. been dropping higher and higher, but for one of the first times, they actually had a significant drop. Yes, it is a survey that is just done to certain participants or, or, or U.S. Uh, residents, but for the first time, it actually dropped significantly. So now, okay. wouldn't you want as a central banker to rewrite the textbook by actually having good consumer consumer sentiment um, uh, on top? Yeah, you will. Uh, sorry, so having good consumer sentiment and on top of having good consumer sentiment, having a very strong growth, uh, unemployment low, not a lot of people uh, lost their jobs during this period of, of our interest rate hikes. So wouldn't you like to rewrite the textbook and have that scenario, but at the same time also bring down inflation? So that is what he meant on this third point when he says, the Fed wouldn't want to jeopardize that because they have a chance of achieving mm. that outcome. So the market is not mm. wrong. The market is doing what the Fed has given to them and something that the market has been waiting for since 2022. So that is why when they got this opportunity, they ran with it. Okay. But the only reason why this is, is an interesting case, it's because the market is not screaming for interest rate cuts. Meaning it's the market, or the, market, the market or the Fed. Economy. The US economy and not the market. The US economy is yeah. the economy interest. itself is not. Yes, it's not, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have EUK, we have EU Euro, where the economy is screaming that you you should be considering I'm mm. interest rate cuts very soon. Based on the economy, mm. not based on what the central bank is saying, but based on the economy and the numbers. That is what we're getting mm. from those two economies. But boy, now what are they doing? They're pushing back. So what will so two there's two ways that this could potentially play out. It is that they eventually give in because they can see that their data is weak or showing weakness, and then they start talking about interest rate cuts. But when they start talking about them, they are pricing them in aggressively because now they need to rush to cut interest okay. rates or cut them in bigger increments so as to minimize the impact of a recession. That is the first scenario from a euro mm -hmm. ne, ne, ne pound. A second scenario is they continue with their current rhetoric and current uh, position of saying, they of not considering or even talking about some interest rate cuts. They continue with that, with that, with that rhetoric but the market participants eventually say, no, you're bluffing us. We're no longer going to pay attention to you. It is clearly evident that your economy is what? It is, uh, it is uh, going down, but you guys keep on telling us that you will keep retire for longer. No, we're not buying it. So that is, when, oh. that is, when we, that is what we call draw boning. That is when the, the, the central bank is just based, it's just talking things up but if we're looking at the data, the data is not is not allow is not agreeing to that. Yeah, but so that is, those are the Ooh. two outcomes that I or two potential scenarios that I see for euro and GBP. Sorry, yeah, euro and GBP that I'm looking at. Which for them, their economy is screaming for interest rate cuts or for a consideration of interest rate cuts. Not necessarily that they should start cutting, but a consideration of interest rate cuts. But they are pushing back against it. And for them, inflation is still high, especially UK. E-services e inflation, which is 47% of the UK CPI, 
debt is still sitting at 6.6%. Hmm. That is three times the target of 2%. So that is still high. So yeah. if the economy is now on its knees, but inflation is still not budging, eventually as market participants, you know, I'm going to continue hiking interest rates or so I'll keep rates higher for longer. And eventually we won't, at some point we won't believe you because we're seeing which your economy is dying. Ooh. You see? So that is that yeah. is uh, that is where to me it comes as which is why I was like it I feel which it's a cautious move from the Fed. It's cautious, calculated, but to a certain extent, I feel it's a smart move. Because let us let us give the market what they've been wanting all this time, even though our economy is still is not yet screaming for that. So that eventually. If next year, 2024, the data for the US starts getting weaker and, and, they, and the Fed comes out and be like, we are cutting interest rates, the market has already priced that in. The market has already absorbed those news. It's no longer news that are new or a shock to the economy. So the selling of the dollar will be less at that point. Whereas, that's what I will say, <laughs> but <they can. laughs> for them 2024 down the line when they eventually say they are cutting interest rates and each economy is in a worse position than it is today imagine the, the, the selling frenzy that will be there mm. so that is that is how I'm viewing it which is why I'm saying it, it in a sense it is like rewriting the textbook from the Fed which is can we potentially rewrite the textbook? Can we potentially achieve a soft landing, but still maintaining high, high, high interest rates and high and, and sorry, high, high unemployed, high low unemployment, high, high growth or strong growth in the economy? Can we achieve that? Because even if they don't achieve that, but let's say even if inflation starts picking up next year or going into next year, into 2024, they will still have somewhat some buffer to like what to change their mind and say, okay, no. We, we, we are keeping our rates higher for longer compared to EU on a GBP where already they are weak. But even if inflation can start pushing higher, let's say Iran uh, Iran uh, gets involved like seriously, we Israel and Gaza war, that also affects what oil, oil prices. Oh, the oil oh. prices go higher. Because remember, OPEC said they will continue I'm a, I'm a, I'm a supply uh, reduction, reduction or, or output cuts into, into 2024, right? So oh. if that happens, what will happen to inflation when, when, when oil prices go higher? That is cost of inflation. Oh, cost price is going to go up now. Inflation exactly. Is so now we'll start higher. seeing inflation. Yes, we'll start seeing headline inflation, which takes into account uh, energy prices. We'll start seeing those push higher. But for oh. the Fed, it would even if it pushes higher, if in, if GDP is still not not go five percent, but let's say it's actually still at two percent, for them their economy can still absorb a a shift in talk and saying, okay, oh. no, we are holding higher for longer. But for you on a GDP, even if they can sh they can still saying, okay, we are maintaining our position, we are not looking to cut, but their economy can it handle and a, a second round of 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 inflation increase when their GDP is already slow, when their um, uh, growth is already suffering. Yeah, but, so that is how oh. I am doing it, which is why, in as much as the Fed has, 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 has announced that they're considering or talking about summer rate cuts, I am not, I don't want to say I'm not buying it, but I am not, I am not buying it in the sense of which I'm running to sell the dollar. I mean, uh, for me, I'm looking at T-Euro and GBP and I'm looking at these two and I'm like, what about you guys? What are you waiting for? Okay, since you don't want to buy. So, 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 yeah. so are you saying at the moment you would rather uh, sell the euro and the GBP instead of the, the dollar? 100%. Yes. But but you would you buy the dollar at the moment based on the data? Um, mm, yeah, I would. Against against Euro and a, Again, a, EU Euro and, and GBP, exactly and GBP. Yeah, yes. yeah. I would yeah. because I, I 
I feel that at some point they will be exposed. Uguti, you guys should have acted earlier. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, so, yeah. So no, it, it it makes sense what you say because I'm listening to you and I'm like thinking, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I can't think of an example here, but I'm mm-hmm. just trying to think of 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 all these economies sort of like being in trouble. Yeah, uh, but the who is in a in a in a in a, in a worse position than this exactly guy. this guy's uh, 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 options they've got that that uh, 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 cushions that they can uh, lend exactly. on when the other yes. ones are not going well, okay no I get you I yeah get you. for, no, for them know. for them for them if thing if inflation can turn around and start pushing higher for them they'll be left exposed with nothing but for oh. each dollar if inflation can start turning around at least they have that in cushion of low unemployment and and and, and stronger GDP. They can they can for them you can substantiate their their if they can start saying which I know we are going to keep right. retire for longer. But for the two euro ne, 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 ne pound, you cannot substantiate. Because. Just talk. Because the data is not supporting the narrative. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, so yeah. so that is why I'm saying. I, I wouldn't I, at this point. I'm not. I'm not jumping on the bandwagon of selling the dollar, based on those reasons. Oh. I'd rather. I'd rather oh. sell people that I can clearly see based on data. Which they are weak, and if they continue to be weaker, eventually the ma- the, the, the market will call them out for bluffing us and be like, okay, you've been bluffing us, so let is cutty. Your economy is weak. Okay, let us sell you guys aggressive and it will be a selling frenzy. So in a way, oh. I might be wrong, but in a way, me choosing to sell a euro on a pound, I am positioning myself when the market eventually catches up to it and they've woken up from this selling frenzy of selling the dollar because we've been looking to sell the dollar all this time. They will eventually see what I bought now, but these are the people that we should be selling. Yeah, instead of instead of the dollar. Yeah, instead of yeah, instead of just jumping on the dollar. These are the people that we should be selling, which is why I am positioning myself early. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes sense, my king. It makes it makes sense. It makes lots of sense. Yeah. So because even because... Like, even like this this guy explains it here. There's nothing negative here that he explained that 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 way he shows that things are really wrong and there's something we don't know that the Fed is knowing. No, all of all of these explanations are just a caution. Maybe oh. this is why. Not Uti, because they can see Uti, we are going into a recession, things are bad, the numbers are lying, it's not what it is or what it seems. No, Lana is just telling us this is a cautious move, a calculated move, Uti. Uh, I forgot it in, in English, the, the, the phrase, but this will look to an we are like sort of situation. Oh. Yeah, bo? Oh. So it's that type of situation for Toluti. Why we're still in a good position, let us introduce this into the market. Because mm-hmm. normal when things start going that way, even the mar- imagine this. If if things were to start going south in terms of the US economy, the data. The market would be like, oh, that is why. It, it, the market would just give it, it would, oh, that is why they, they, they considered cutting early. It won't be something new. It won't be something that's a shock. It would be like, oh, now it makes sense. Yeah. It yeah, won't be an aggressive yeah. selling of the dollar. Right. But now, yeah. if, if, if the dollar continues on, on we, we hold rates higher for longer, then second quarter GDP 2024 comes in at a negative. Imagine the selling of the dollar that would have happened at that point. It would probably would have been two times greater what it is today. What it is now. Yeah, bro. So, but that is yeah. just how I'm viewing it. No, I hear you. Yeah. Because if really they were considering Amarit cards, they would, come on, quanti- quantitative tightening is, I don't want to say an equivalent, but it has a similar effect to hiking on my interest rates. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, quantitative tightening is selling of bonds, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that has a similar effect to hiking interest rates or keeping keeping rates higher for longer. So if, <clears throat> sorry, 
So if, if Fed was really saying we are cutting interest rates or we are really, really considering cutting interest rates, they should have also spoken about we are going to maybe also look at stopping the quantitative tightening. Because remember, if, if you are cutting interest rates, it ha also has a similar effect to doing what? To buying bonds, which is quantitative easing, not tightening. So you cannot, you cannot say you're cutting interest rates, but you're also selling bonds. Doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah, bro? So that is, I mean, I'm yeah. looking at it, all those angles. Which in their statement, they're still saying they, are, they will continue quantitative tightening as previously ex explained. Nothing has changed there. The only change is that we, will, we have now started having talks about AMA interest rate cuts. Not good, we will cut, but we have started having talks. Yeah, so, yeah, that's how I'm viewing it. Oh. And now the market took that as they are going to cut the interest yeah. rates and then and the yeah. dollar. Yeah. And of which they may not be wrong. Maybe they will cut interest rates. But at the yeah. same time. Yeah. 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 So for me, that's that's where I stand with the dollar. Not to say I'm 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 overly bullish like I was previously, but I'm also not as bearish as, as most people have turned out to be. Oh, so maybe for you, this is the time where you would want to wait. Uh, or what? Or what? Yeah, yeah, and I'd, I'd want. I, I'd, okay, I'd want to wait when it comes to the dollar, but like I I, I would tell you. I think it was Umlu that I was talking. Umlu and Tobe and I also said the same thing. That's the benefit of understanding fundamentals. You can't only focus on one thing. If it if the dollar oh. score is like it, it is what it is right now, it's not clear. Okay, let me focus on the euro. Let me focus on the pound. Oh, JPY, no, it's JPY. JPY is becoming the more the more the more attractive uh, economy right now. Even though now, but they haven't said they're gonna hike. But come on, eventually you will need to budge. 